when I was kind of focused on social media as a more conservative person and blacklisted because of that agent's behavior, vile behavior, I, uh, I went to an opening of a film a friend of mine had produced. He was kind of new to the business. And I said, okay, I'll go. It was at the Academy uh, Theater. And you, you come down the stairs and the place is mobbed. And I thought, oh, man. And um, I, I felt like I'm just, you know, I felt like that one guy in the famous pictures of everybody saluting Hitler and he's not saluting Hitler. I thought, well, here I am. I'm at a meeting of the Communist Party and I'm you half that room. People come up to me and go, hey, I just, you know, I just want you to know I'm, I'm with you, but I, but, you know, I, I just don't want to say anything. And I said, and don't say anything. I said, because people really are dangerous. They will, you know that these casting directors now will look up your social media history. They'll see who you follow and so on. Yeah, you know, I say to my friends, I won't say who it is, but a very patriotic, great American who does wonderful things for people in this country, supports veterans and a wonderful guy. He said, you know, being just moderately uh, conservative in this country, just being conservative uh, in America today is like being gay in the 50s. It's almost like you have to whisper. I, I see people say to me, we'll be talking, they go, you know, I'm thinking of I'm voting for Trump, but I go, you don't have to whisper this. This is the United States. You don't have to whisper that you're going to vote for the most popular person in the country right now in terms of the polls to be the next president of the United States. You actually don't have to apologize for exercising your First Amendment rights. And we've got to stop doing that. You know? But if you ever want to work Look, again in Hollywood or if you want to make a career there as a young person, oh, yeah, yeah, no. different, different story. No you, you must be, keep quiet. Oh, yeah, you have no chance. Uh, I mean, look, <laughs> it's really funny. When, when Oppenheimer came out, there was a discussion about my Twitter. Oh, geez. And it was gently suggested that I basically remain invisible, which was painful. On the other hand, I'm a pragmatic person, and I thought a lot of people put their effort into this. So I'm just going to be an invisible pariah because the people who are going to be voting for Oscars, which is very important for a film to get Oscars, uh, because it does help with the financial reward and the historical archive in which it will rest forever, Academy Award winning Best Picture, Oppenheimer. You know, I don't want to deprive those people. I don't want to have some nutcase come out of the woodwork, fabricate some ridiculous story about me. I've had a million of them said they're all lies. I don't want that to happen and have the clickbait story be, hey, James, you want the executive producer Oppenheimer? We're not going to watch that movie. So, you know, I just, I step back and basically, you know, took one for the team and just, you wouldn't even know, I wasn't even invited to the Producers Guild Award. I'm a producer on the picture and I was not invited to go to the Producers Guild Award, which is fine, awards. By the way, won, but, you know. Wow. Um, and and you know, it's, it's not, that environment was not the one that my father shed blood for. Uh, it's not the one that I see as the America, I, I would like to see my late brother, God rest his soul, my late brother's children, and they're now, their, their children, in, not the future I, I see for them. I'd like you to be able to vote for whoever you want to. And people say, you know what, you have a right to do it. Man, I disagree with you, but Steve, come have dinner and so on. And I, I just don't know why there's this vicious underlying cancer that has destroyed our business. And here's where it comes from. Oh, by the way, I got a little secret project coming out oh. soon in October. Can't say anything about it. Um, if you go to my website, jameswoods.com, there'll be a little hint of what it might be, but I can't say another word about it. Hmm. It's gonna be, but some things are going to kind of come out because, because I decided to embrace the second act. Oh, look at you. You are <laughs> such a sneaky little but I, devil. I, I couldn't figure it out, though. I, I have the picture, but oh, I don't God. know what it's telling me. Yeah. 
Yeah, and you're going to have to think about this now for the next couple of months. But we're going to be teasing stuff out. If you sign up, give your email on my on the website. Um, you'll uh, uh, you'll be given updates on on it. Um, it it's a uh, it's a project that's n just unbelievably near and dear to my heart. And the good thing is, I I'm doing more stuff now. I'm I'm involved in the production of Oliver Stone's new movie. I love Oliver. He's difficult. We disagree on everything. We fight all the time. And he came to me and said, hey, Jimmy, you know, you think you can help with this project like you did with Oppenheimer? And I said, I think I can. And, you know, I've, luckily I've got Chuck and Alex Gartner and, of course, Fernando Sulichin, who's, who's, uh, who's uh, Oliver's uh, producer. And uh, the four of us are together on a handshake, kind of just trying to get this beautiful project put together. And we will, and it's going to be fantastic. So, you know, F. Scott Fitzgerald famously said, there are no second acts in American lives, but my second act is shaping up pretty well. And I give all the credit to somebody who's sitting there off camera, my absolutely beloved, brilliant wife, who Sarah, who is, she's like this extraordinary photographer, Oh, there she, that was, that's the night of the Oscars. Mm -hmm. by, by the way, everybody tries to get into the Vanity Fair party. We were living at the time in the wonderful Lermitage Hotel. If you ever stay in Beverly Hills, stay at the Lermitage, wonderful people there. We were staying there while we were renovating the house we're in now. And for some reason, there was, our local internet provider gave us a hard time. So I had the camera set up in our living room so beautiful now i'm sitting in front of the refrigerator because we're near uh, sorry the connection was bad because they were doing some <laughs> but there we are anyway so my beloved wife like i'll be watching poker on tv and she'll be in the other room she'll be doing stuff and i figure out she's probably watching the kardashians or something and along the way all of a sudden i said what are you doing so, so you know my book i said what I said what my book i said your book what what book? She goes, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm writing a book. Well, first of all, she's, this is a little scary. She's an unbelievable expert on every murder ever committed. <laughs> yes, she's my kind of gal. Yeah. I'm ready to, I'm yeah, ready to solve crime with Sarah. Oh, great. Let's have a threesome so you can both stab me to death after you duct tape me <laughs> to a chair. That'd be fun. Uh, yeah. No, she, 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 uh, she, can't believe I just asked Megan Kelly on air to have a threesome. Anyway, okay. <laughs> anyway, um, no. I said, I said, I'm sorry. What? Well, what's your What's your book about? She goes, Well, I, I've got a few chapters. Do you, you want to read it? And now I go. Oh, now I got to read my wife's book. And you know, I said, Risky. Sarah, I, I, you know, I'm a professional producer. I'm, a, you know, that right? She goes, Yeah, honey, I know that. I said, So. Do you want the, oh, darling, this is wonderful. It's so cute. You want that? You should, nope. I want your straight answer. I got a book, got a manuscript. I want you to read it like a producer. I said, okay. What do you have? Seven chapters. Shit. <laughs> okay. I read the seven chapters and I put it down and I go, I say the three words every writer wants to hear and which are almost a guarantee if you write a thriller or a mystery to get your movie made or your book made into a movie what happens next mm. she goes what I said, what happens next she goes well i'm, I'm working on it. i got I, I can't but you can tell me i'm your husband she goes no mr big shot i'm a producer you i'm gonna give you the answer no uh, you'll get it when i'm ready and i said i can't believe it you've been sitting in there all this time writing a book over the past whatever we've been four years and this, what, whatever she goes that's sort of accurate. <laughs> and she didn't said, tell what, you. What's, You'll yeah. get it when I'm ready, no, no, by no, the no. way, is no, sort no, of the no, cardinal no. rule of marriage. But go ahead. No, no. Here's the, uh, here's the punchline. I said, she was, a, I wasn't writing a book. I said, oh, I'm confused. She said, I, I wrote four books. What? I said, we've been married almost a decade. And in the process, you've managed to write three and a half novels. And I didn't know about it because, you know, I'm, I'm Hercule Poirot. I know what's going on around here. <laughs> I'm in a 2,200 square foot house on the beach. There's no way she can ever get away from me. I'm like, hey, what are you doing over there? 
And, you know, she's writing like novels and her photography, as you probably know, if you follow her online, I mean, everybody on X loves Sarah's pictures. Do you owe back taxes? Pandemic relief is now over. Along with hiring thousands of new agents and field officers, the IRS has kicked off 2024 by sending over 5 million pay up letters to those who have an unfiled tax return or have a balance owed. Don't waive your rights and speak with them on your own. Don't do that, for God's sake. Tax Network USA, a trusted tax relief firm, has saved over $1 billion in back taxes for their clients. And they can help you, too. Whether you owe $10,000 or $10 million, they can help you. Whether it's business or personal taxes, even if you have the means to pay, or if you don't, if you're on a fixed income, they can help finally resolve your tax burdens once and for all. Call 1-800-245-6000 for a private free consultation. Or just visit tnusa.com slash Megan. Thanks so much for watching. If you like what you just saw, hit the subscribe button for more clips and full episodes.